Hello and welcome to the Universal Heart Book Club. This is a new initiative uh, from me, writer Stephanie Dowrick, and from Walter, Walter Mason. And every month we're going to bring you a range of books, ideas, writers, and hopefully make a space for your comments, your conversations, and most of all your um, ideas about books that really matter. And today we're going to start with Walter discussing Charlotte Wood's Love and Hunger. Yes. Um, Stephanie, this is, a, this is a beautiful book about food and about family and about belonging. I remember seeing Charlotte discuss it before it came out. And I thought that, that's an interesting way of looking at food because we're surrounded by food at the moment, aren't we? It's everywhere we go. It's, mm-hmm. it's, in, it's on TV. It's, it's, it's become such a big part of our lives. And Charlotte's book is kind of the antidote to that celebritization of food. She's bringing food back into the realm of shared, shared comfort and as an expression of love. It's a collection of essays and uh, recipes. It's just a beautiful read. Uh, one of the things that I loved about this book and that really attracted me, and I need to say that I'm not a foodie, you know, <laughs> I, I don't buy books about food, but when you suggested this book and I read it, I, I came to it with a real interest because she's a novelist. Mm, mm. Yeah, and that comes through. It's, it's, so, it's so tightly written and there's such a there's a real narrative thread there, and the stories are so involving and so beautiful. She writes about ways that that food was an expression of some family feeling, and and uh, she herself being uh, perhaps an introverted person and using food as as a gesture of, of of love and understanding to others, and that really comes across. So yeah, it's it's much much deeper book. Yes, I thought it was wonderful. And there's a a whole section in it on consolation and comfort. Mm -hmm. And I felt that those were really the themes. In fact, I thought in a very different way, it's another book about kindness. Absolutely. You know, it's about about the the beautiful, sacred traditions of hospitality. Yes. And really not just opening your front door or setting your table, but really opening your heart to other people and using using food as a kind of marvellous medium for this, you know, to, to console, to feed, but not to feed the body only, also to feed the mind and spirit. Um, so Charlotte Wood's Love and Hunger was a real fine. Thank you very much for that. It's a pleasure. It's a yeah. pleasure. I loved every minute of it. And the recipes are fantastic and so inspiring. Have you tried one? I have. I have indeed. I've started doing things like making my own pastry and brining my meats and all kinds of things. Because she wants us to get back to that, really having a contact with what we're doing. Yes, so so that aspect of it is the sensuality. Mm. The sensuality of cooking, the sensuality of being with people, the sensuality of feeling that emerges so strongly. And one last thing is, this is a beautiful looking book, and it's a very strong book visually. Did mm. you think? Absolutely, yeah. It's a lovely thing to hold. Mm. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Look, the book that I chose is so different. Um, it's... Uh, Barbara Arrowsmith Young's The Woman Who Changed Her Brain. And as you can see, um, Walter and I have different editions of it, but it's the exact same book. Um, I was intrigued by this book because Barbara Arrowsmith Young was brought to our attention, those of us who had read Norman Doidge's really exceptional book called The Brain That Changes Itself. And Barbara Arrowsmith Young is one of the people that he wrote most about. And she is a woman of quite exceptional intelligence, but also really exceptional curiosity and innovation. Mm. And she was so frustrated by what she came to define as her brain deficits. That is the ways in which physiologically her brain simply wouldn't do what her intelligence insisted that it should be able to do. Mm. And so she found her way with a lot of difficulty and a lot of persistence and a lot of pain. She found her way to remedy those deficits. And one of the most extraordinary things about her story is that she's very convincing that once those changes have been made, the brain remains changed. Mm. You don't have to keep... It's not like going to the gym where, you know, you slide back (laughs) and, you know, you lose all your fitness. Once those deficits have been remedied, um, you, you continue to have the same ease in that area of learning where you once had such um, problems. And I do want to say, before asking you what you thought of it, I do want to say there were a couple of things about it that were quite confronting. One is that it makes it really clear what your own deficits are. Mm. 
Mm. And the, the second is that the deficits are not just around learning disabilities. Um, for example, there are many people who find it very difficult to remember a face. There are many people who find it very difficult to know how to cross a road because their spatial skills are so distorted. Mm. Mm. Um, there are many people who can't quite grasp what before and after means. And um, Barbara Arrowsmith Young writes about all of that in the most um, intriguing and clarifying way without making it too simple. Yeah. What did you think? I, 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 was, I approached this book with some trepidation because I, I think I'm scared of these kinds of books. And she explains in this book why I'm scared of those kinds of books. Because I was always told that I'm not the sort of person who understands these things. Scientific things. I was bad at science and I was yeah. bad at maths and good yeah, at yeah, English yeah. and yeah, good yeah, at history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Me too. Yeah, and, and it was... In so, I couldn't believe how often I recognised myself in these pages. Yes. And I think that sometimes our kind of knowledge is um, is is uh, privileged in some way. You yes. Know? And it, it taught me that, in fact, the people that we might make judgments about yes. are, in fact, just dealing with a whole different brain structure, a whole different physiology. Y- yes. And didn't you make it also clear how how we have progressed in the, in a decade mm. on thousands of years of misinformation Absolutely. about what the brain is. So, so I was so struck as a meditator also to really recognize through this book how the, the mind can address difficulties of the brain, but that the brain also needs to be brought into harmony with the mind and and she isn't a meditator herself Mm. but that became very very clear to me that immensely intricate relationship between mind and brain and brain and mind Mm. fascinating and it was a book filled with hope filled with hope yes i'm so glad you said that because it's a very hopeful very tender very brave book in many many ways now the one thing criticism that I would make of it is that I didn't find there was enough about the actual exercises so in one of the articles that we're putting up on our Universal Heart Book Club blog website um, I'm going to give some references Mm -hmm. of actual exercises that I think would be very uh, very helpful for people who have these kinds of difficulties Mm -hmm. it'll be fascinating I look forward to reading those yes so is there something else that you want to add to this before we conclude? I just think that if you are scared of science books, if you are scared of brain books, which I have been previously, this is a book to go to because it's, it's very accessible and it's so filled with explanation. Mm. It's so filled with story. Yeah, And of course, story. you're a person who loves story. I'm a person who loves story. Most readers are people who love stories. Yes, and yes. so this really takes you to the heart of the matter through the power of story. Yes. So we look forward so much to you visiting us also on the blog, to reading all the reviews that we have there, and to coming back and meeting us again with a video next month. Thank you so much. Thank you.